Hello friends and welcome to my channel. In this video, we will be learning about the Norma frontalis. The Norma frontalis is roughly oval in outline, being wider above than below. Now let's look at the bones seen in the Norma frontalis. The frontal bone forms the forehead. Its upper part is smooth and convex, but the lower part is irregular and is interrupted by the orbits and by the anterior bony aperture of the nose. The right and left maxillae that you can see right here forms the upper jaw. The right and left nasal bones forms the bridge of the nose. The zygomatic bones that you see right here and here forms the bony prominence of the suprolateral part of the cheeks. The mandible which is a separate bone and is a part of the bones of the norma frontalis forms the lower jaw. The norma frontalis will be studied under the following headings. The frontal region, the orbital opening, the anterior piriform shaped opening of the nose and finally the lower part of the face. Now let's begin with the frontal region. The frontal region presents the following four features. The superciliary arch seen right here is a rounded curved elevation situated just above the medial part of each orbit. It overlies the frontal sinus and is better marked in males than in females. The glabella right here is a median elevation connecting the two superciliary arches. At this point we can see the glabella. Below the glabella the skull recedes to the frontonasal suture that you can see right here at the root of the nose. The nasion is a median point at the root of the nose where the internasal suture meets the frontonasal suture. As you can see right here. The frontal tuber or eminence is a low rounded elevation above the superciliary arch one on each side right here. It is most prominent in females and children. Now let's learn about the orbital openings. Each orbital opening is quadrangular in shape as you can see and is bounded by the following four margins. The supraorbital margin is formed by the frontal bone. At the junction of its lateral two-thirds and medial one-third, it presents a supraorbital notch or supraorbital foramen, as you can see right here. The infraorbital margin is formed by the zygomatic bone laterally and maxilla medially. The medial orbital margin is ill-defined and it is formed by the frontal bone above as you can see here and by the lacrimal crest of the frontal process of the maxilla below. The lateral orbital margin is formed mostly by the frontal process of the zygomatic bone but is completed above by the zygomatic process of the frontal bone that you can see right here. The frontozygomatic suture lies here. Now let's learn about the anterior bony aperture of the nose. The anterior bony aperture is pear shaped as you can see right here. Being wide below and narrow above. Now let's learn about its boundaries. Above it is bounded by the lower border of the nasal bones right here. Below it is bounded by the nasal notch of the body of the maxilla on each side as you can see here. Now let's look at the features. Firstly the articulations of the nasal bone. Anteriorly it articulates with the opposite bone at the internasal suture right here. Posteriorly it articulates with the frontal process 
of the maxilla right here. Superiorly it articulates with the frontal bone at the frontonasal suture. Inferiorly the upper nasal cartilage is attached to it. The anterior nasal spine that you can see right here is a sharp projection in the median plane in the lower boundary of the piriform aperture. The rhinion is the lowermost point of the internasal suture right here. Moving on to the lower part of the face, we have the maxilla bone, the zygomatic bone and the mandible. Beginning with the maxilla, the maxilla contributes a large share in the formation of the facial skeleton. The anterior surface of the body of the maxilla presents the nasal notch medially, the anterior nasal spine that you can see right here the infraorbital foramen right here, the incisive fossa above the incisor teeth right here and the canine fossa lateral to the canine eminence right here. In addition, three out of four processes of the maxilla are seen in the norma frontalis. The frontal process of the maxilla that you see right here articulates anteriorly with the nasal bone superiorly with the frontal bone and posteriorly with the lacrimal bone. The zygomatic process of the maxilla is short but stout. It articulates with the zygomatic bone. The alveolar process of the maxilla bears sockets for the upper teeth as you can see right here. Moving on to the zygomatic bone. The zygomatic bone forms the prominence of the cheek. The zygomaticofacial foramen is seen on its surface right here. Moving on to the mandible, the mandible forms the lower jaw. The upper border or the alveolar arch lodges the lower teeth. The lower border or the base is rounded. The middle point of the base is called the mental point or Nathian right here. The point on the angle of the mandible is called the gonian right here. Now let's look at the sutures of the norma frontalis. Firstly there is the internasal suture right here. Then there is the frontonasal suture. Then comes the nasomaxillary suture then we see the lacrimomaxillary suture, the frontomaxillary suture, the intermaxillary suture, the zygomaticomaxillary suture and finally the zygomaticofrontal suture. Now let's learn about the attachments on the norma frontalis. Firstly, we have the corrugator supercilii which originates from the medial part of the superciliary arch right here. This muscle is the corrugator supercilii. The procerus muscle arises from the nasal bone near the median plane. This is the procerus. The orbital part of the orbicularis oculi arises from the frontal process of the maxilla and the nasal part of the frontal bone that is right here. This muscle is the orbicularis oculi. The medial palpebral ligament is attached to the frontal process of the maxilla between the frontal and maxillary origin of the orbicularis oculi muscle. The levator labi superioris aliquae nasi originates from the frontal process of the maxilla just in front of the origin of the orbicularis oculi right here. This is the levator labi superioris aliquae nasi. The levator labi superioris originates from the maxilla between the infraorbital margin and the infraorbital foramen that is right here. This is the levator labi superioris. The levator anguli oris 
arises from the canine fossa right here. This is the levator anguli oris. The nasalis and the depressor septi originate from the surface of the maxilla bordering the nasal notch. This is the nasalis muscle. This is the depressor septi nasi. The zygomaticus minor and major arise from the surface of the zygomatic bone. The zygomaticus minor muscle arises below the zygomaticofacial foramen right here. The zygomaticus major arises lateral to the minor muscle. This is the zygomaticus minor. This is the zygomaticus major. The buccinator muscle arises from the maxilla and the mandible opposite the molar teeth and from the pterygomandibular raphae, it also forms a part of the orbicularis oris. This is the buccinator muscle. An easy way to remember the attachments on the norma frontalis is by the use of the sentence medical college professor ordered naughty dancing zombie lily to buy lime and lollipop. Now please note that the red color indicates the origin of muscles while the green color indicates the attachment of muscles. Now the M stands for the attachment of the medial palpebral ligament, C for the origin of corrugator supercilii, P for the origin of procedures, O for the origin of orbicularis oculi, N for the origin of nasalis, D for the origin of depressor septi, Z for the origin of zygomaticus major and minor, L for the origin of levator anguli oris, B for the origin of buccinator, L for the origin of levator labi superioris and L for the origin of levator labi superioris aliquae nasi. Now let's learn about the structures passing through the foramina. The supraorbital notch or foramen transmits the supraorbital nerves and vessels. The external nasal nerve emerges between the nasal bone and the external nasal cartilage. The infraorbital foramen you see right here transmits the infraorbital nerves and vessels. The zygomaticofacial foramen transmits the zygomaticofacial nerve that is a branch of the maxillary nerve. The mental foramen of the mandible transmits the mental nerve and vessels. I hope you found this video helpful. To get updates on my upcoming videos on the skull, please refer to my channel playlist given in the description below. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Thank you for watching.